Hi everyone, Microsoft Dataverse is the new name for what was Dataflex, Common Data Service, CDS, Oakdale and it's now become generally available. And what I'm going to do is very briefly in the space for about 10 minutes tell you all I know and we know at this stage about Dataverse for Teams. So let's get started on that. What is in the box? Well, as a part of Teams, what you're going to get is you're going to get a database and in that database, you're going to be able to effectively put apps and Power Automate flows and even chatbots. So there's quite a lot of material there. From a licensing point of view, it's actually really, really simple. If you have a Teams license, then you have the right to be able to create Microsoft Dataverse uh, databases effectively. And that means you can make the flows and you can make the apps and, and the chatbots as well. So it's pretty straightforward from that uh, standpoint. Now, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to jump over and show you what the quick start of being able to create a, a Dataverse um, instance within Teams. So here I am, I'm in Microsoft Office. I can click onto Teams. It's gonna open an online instance of Teams for me. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna uninstall this because what I need to show you is how to in install it. So all you need to do is you need to hit the three dots here and then you need to type in Power Apps, click on Power Apps, and then it's gonna add that in for you. So it's so straightforward, really. At this point in time, you'll click on Create an App, and then you'll set, tell it which, which team to put it into. And if that team doesn't already have uh, a, uh, a Dataverse uh, environment uh, within it then it will go and create one now I'm going to show you one where I've created one so I can go to this one here and I can click create and it's going to start creating uh, an app for me because uh, I've already created the environment uh, previously so it's just going to work through that I can give the app a name I can call it test click save on it and then I can attach the the various details to uh, to entities that I've already created make sure you check out the links because I've actually done uh, quite a long video about this entire process so don't expect to see everything about teams here now if I try to create an app inside a team that didn't previously have this then what you would find is that it would actually start to create an environment for you. So I can click on any team and click create and you'll see that it takes a bit of time. You will actually get an email when it has finished the process. It takes roughly 10 minutes that sort of uh, time period. Now the interface and navigation of of the experience in Teams is different to what you will be used to. And one thing I will mention is that once you've actually got this icon on the left hand side here, make sure you pin it there because otherwise it will just keep disappearing, which can be a little bit uncomfortable. Now I'm gonna to navigate to an app that I previously created. I'm gonna click see more. Then I can actually click on the environment that I'm interested in and I can click on one of the apps that I previously created. So I'll just click on that. And now I'm in the build experience. And you'll see that this is a very similar experience to what you'll find in, in uh, the traditional Power Apps experience. You've got different options on the left hand side, you've got the data pane here, you can see the properties on the right hand side, and you've also got uh, the ability to see the properties here as well, as well as the, the functions bar in this place. And you can also preview it over on the right hand side. And then finally, publishing, super easy there. We won't go into that in this stage. Uh, because we'll we'll go on uh, we can uh, you can look at that in the course itself 
What I want to do is make the comparison between that and the traditional power apps. So this whole time we've actually been looking at a power app and you can see it's very, very similar. What you do miss though, is you certainly miss this piece here and you miss the, the elements around uh, theming and th there are just slightly easier routes to get to some things in this place. And also the insert piece is also missing, but that may change at some point in the future. So moving back to the traditional uh, power apps, uh, the, the Dataverse experience, you can see that it's a bit different. Now the key point to know about Dataverse is you are getting this amazing experience, this entire environment that has a database associated with it. So all of your apps and your Power Automate flows and are all sitting on top of this amazing database. And it's a very rich database. And although they'll be talking about columns and tables, these are pretty amazing uh, features that, have, uh, that you can start to use. And do bear in mind that you can actually upscale this to the full version of Dataverse if you need to in the future. So looking at the app that I previously prepared, if you actually look at this add data, I can add data and the, all these tables exist within the, within the Teams experience. Do bear in mind though, if you actually click off this in any way, you may find that you lose things. If you move back to build, I've just lost where I was in there. Um, I'm just going to point out that if you actually go on to see all in this area, you get to see an awful, awful lot more. And that does also give you the ability to navigate to um, particular tables. In fact, that's not a table. That is uh, that is a an app. Whereas if I actually go to the city and I go on to edit there, then this is the table of data. And even when I'm in this experience, I can click edit data and I can start changing the data that's there. That's a pretty simple thing to do. Now we've already talked about the differences between app building in traditional power apps at make.powerapp.com and the way in which you build them here. There are differences in the object. If you look at labels and buttons, there are differences. So please don't expect to find it to be a completely a comparable experience. And one of the reasons for that is that the objects that you're getting are more modern objects and they're also formatted in a way that is, at least from a colour perspective, more consistent with the team's experience. So the out of the box app. We, uh, we can take a bit of a look at the out of the box app. They're pretty straightforward to make. So if I was in this area here and I was to create a new table, uh, I could create that quite easily. You can also do that if you go into create a, a canvas app, you go onto the tablet form factor and then you connect to some data, it will actually build a good chunk of the app for you. This is me building a simple timesheet app. And you can see that I can create a time sheet table. Create the time sheet table. It's gonna now give me the ability to create new fields in here. So this is the edit experience, so name, and I can put in time. Notice that there are rich field types that you can use here. So I'm just gonna put in a decimal there, uh, click create on that. I'll put Rory and and I'll put a time of say 10. If I click close on that now, what we'll find is the app will start to build itself. And this is a fully working app that you can then publish to Teams into one of your channels. So I could just click next on that. I would choose the channel that I wanna to want to put this into. I can click on general, click on that uh, plus, and then click save and close. And that is now published into my team. And now you can see that when I'm within my team, I can click on the timesheet tab and it's actually going to open that app for me. And this app is usable by all of the team members by default. 
Now one thing to note is that there are some really cool app templates that you can actually make use of There's and, and those are supported by data sources that, that are relevant to the ones that you create. Now to get to those all you need to do is click on your Power Apps icon and then click on the employee IDs um, example here, click on it and it will actually add it into your team. It's super simple click on set it up as a tab and then it will just create it for you it does it super quickly I just need to click on save on that and then this employee ideas app will be created for me and this is an example of the app working here now if you want some more detail on this I know that April Dunham has done some videos that are more specifically geared towards these app doing a bit more of a deep dive on them so that you can understand them a little bit better and don't forget this is your app you can change this app if you wish to so i'm conscious of time now and i realize we're probably going to go over but it's probably for a good thing permissions are relatively straightforward they respect the permissions within within uh, teams so that's owners members and guests and there are different options and it will become clearer as time goes on as to the granularity of those options so make sure you sign up for the course in order to find out more on that so once again Microsoft Dataverse is really deep you can build bots in there I'm not going to go into the process of building a bot um, uh, I'll just move across in fact just to show you that it's relatively straightforward so what you would do is similar to before you would actually look up at the power virtual agents you can see it there it's actually already been created and then you can click open on there and then you will create your virtual agents here you can then click start now and then you're about to start your uh, the process of creating a chatbot within dataverse i'm just going to choose a uh, an environment that's already got a, uh, that's already got dataverse in it click on continue give the bot a name and you can start editing your uh, your chatbot building flows is a similar experience in fact it's not too difficult to, to build the flows I'm not going to go into detail on that but it's a similar kind of experience features coming soon uh, we we know that Power BI will have the ability to look at the data that's in here then finally thinking about limitations there is a two gigabyte limitation on this and there's also a one million rows limitation on this as well and that then means that if you wanted to scale up to the pro version of uh, Microsoft Dataverse for Teams that would be a possibility for you finally how to get started well there's lots of ways to get started you can actually sign up for the course that I've put together and you'll be able to do that for free um, so there's always going to be lots of content in there and that includes live sessions that we do so we can all learn a little bit more about this platform thank you for watching this video I hope you found it useful and if you're in any doubt about the power of this platform and indeed of power apps then we never left power apps at any point in this whole session this is the real deal and I really hope you get on board with this thanks